Welcome to the heart dissection. Today you'll need a sheep heart and your dissection tools. So we're gonna start by figuring out the front and the back of the heart. The front is taller and rounder and the back is flatter and shorter. So put your heart so that you can see the front. And again, the right side of the heart is actually on your left, and the left side of the heart is on your right. And that's simply because it's the sheep's left and right side rather than yours. And down the center of the front of your heart, you'll see the interventricular sulcus. That is a ridge that divides the two ventricles of the heart, which you'll be able to see a little closer later. And then coming off of that interventricular sulcus, you have coronary blood vessels, which supply oxygen to the heart itself. So it's wrapped with coronary blood vessels all around it. And then the apex is the tip of the heart at the very bottom. So take a look again at the interventricular sulcus here, and you'll see that the left ventricle is significantly larger than the right ventricle. And that's because the left ventricle is responsible for pumping blood to the whole body, so it needs more muscle than the right ventricle, which only pumps blood to the lungs and back. So the top two chambers of the heart, the atria, are covered by auricles. This is the right auricle, and this is the left auricle, and those are named because they look like ears. Those cover the atria on the top of the heart. Okay, let's turn the heart around and we'll take a look at some of the blood vessels coming in and out of the heart. So now we're looking here at the back of the heart and the front of the heart now that we've turned it around. See if you can find the pulmonary vein near the back of the heart. That delivers blood from the lungs into the left atrium of the heart. You might be able to feel that left atrium if you push in there a little bit with your probe. Then you'll also be able to see the superior vena cava, which brings blood down from your head into the right atrium of your heart. And next you can find the aorta, which is the largest artery leaving the heart and that is carrying oxygenated blood away from the left ventricle out to the rest of your body. And then finally you can find the pulmonary trunk near the front that is divided into the left and right pulmonary arteries. This is the right pulmonary artery and the left one's under my finger. That carries deoxygenated blood away from the right ventricle to the lungs. So once you've found all those vessels, what you can do is cut your heart in half. Make sure that you are cutting across so that the front and the back of the heart are still intact. So you are cutting between the front section and the back of the heart. And make sure that you put it down on the tray so that you can push on it a little bit without cutting yourself. So you can divide that heart completely in half and you will have a ventral side, which is the front, and the dorsal side, which is the back of the heart. Okay, 
Okay, so we have the taller ventral side, the front, and the shorter dorsal side in the back. Remember that on the ventral side, we've got the left ventricle now on the correct side because we just flipped that whole heart over, and the right ventricle. And then on the dorsal side, the left and the right ventricle flipped. So we'll take a look actually at the dorsal side because it's going to be the same anatomy as the external anatomy you looked at, so it'll be a little easier to keep track. So looking at some internal anatomical features here, the first thing you can see are the chordae tendinae, which are those thin pieces of tissue. Those are responsible for holding the valves in place. And right here you can see this flap of tissue is the bicuspid valve that separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. So blood flows down from the left atrium into the left ventricle through that bicuspid valve. And then goes out to the rest of the body through the aorta, which you really can't see here. Then after it comes back, after dropping off that oxygen, it's deoxygenated blood now coming back into the right atrium and then into the right ventricle. And there's a valve between those two chambers as well. That's the tricuspid valve. You can see that flap right there. And the valves are responsible for keeping blood from moving backwards through the chambers of the heart, keeping them going in the correct direction. So reviewing that blood flow again, we have blood coming in from the body tissues into the right atrium and the right ventricle, then out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to pick up more oxygen, then back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, and then down into the left ventricle. and then out through the aorta to the rest of the body again to drop off the oxygen and then the cycle repeats itself. So let's just do a little review of blood flow here. Deoxygenated blood, which we represent as blue, is coming in from the body tissues through the superior and inferior vena cava, then into the right atrium through the right tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. Then from the right ventricle it goes through the pulmonary artery and out to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So when it comes back, we represent it as red because it's oxygenated blood coming through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Then it's going to pass through the bicuspid valve and into the left ventricle. From that left ventricle, it's going to leave through the aorta and go out to deliver that oxygen to the body tissues. And it'll come back into the right atrium and the cycle will be complete. If this doesn't quite make sense to you yet, I'd suggest re-watching the video or checking out some of the extra links in this week's assignments.